A look at Friday's clash between Clemson and Ohio State University in the Gator Bowl. With commentary by coach Danny Ford and the voice of the Tigers, Jim Phillips. Gator Bowl 78 highlights is brought to you by Southern Bank, Pet Milk, Carolina Pride Fine Meats, your Federal Land Bank and Production Credit Association, and by Miller High Life, distributors of light and low and brow beers. American League. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first ever Danny Ford Show. And what a show it's going to be because, uh, well, Danny, what can I say? You worked out very, very hard in Florida. You led up to a game that was played last Friday night. If that's not the biggest night of your life up to now, I'd like to know what is. I tell you, Jim, Christmas came early at the Ford's house, and it's, it's been a, it's been a good, good Christmas, good year. Uh, it, you know, no doubt about it, the biggest day of my life was uh, last Friday night. And... Uh, we were very, very surprised and that everything happened the way it happened, but we were very, very pleased that everything turned out the way it did. I don't think you were necessarily surprised. You, you'd worked very hard. I um, was fortunate enough to be with the team all of the time you spent in Daytona, and I could sense something beginning to happen there in those two-a-days. Oh, I tell you, we, uh, we worked as hard as we could work, and, and it was one of the things that, that we wanted to do uh, that we had such a long vacation from South Carolina game, we didn't do enough work before then, so we went and Playing a hard practice down there, and I think that probably proved that uh, the outcome of the game, the way we worked down in Daytona. And then when we came to Jacksonville, of course, we let up and, and let the kids get their feet back under them, and they played super, and they just did an outstanding job. Well, talking about outstanding jobs, short in staff because of the complications that had occurred a few days before. Then, of course, those seniors who went out there and laid it on the line. Two key factors, I think. i tell you, the defensive folks, they... Uh, they had to do the best job in America coaching because they, we had we had coaches that changed around and, and we had uh, sh we were short the two coaches uh, the linebacker coach and the, and the defensive end coach and, and of course their kind of offense they ran they had those kind of people had to play well and I think Coach Bugard Coach uh, Andrews and Coach Ware and Coach Anderson Coach Bass all the ones that, ca that came in field and did an ex excellent job and the, and the offensive coaches did you know they did as good as they could do under the circumstances because we were worried about the defense and we were defense worried about the offense and everybody just pulled together you know the, the fan the support helped the the, the kids pulled together and then you know we had a pretty good coaching staff uh, when the bowl game kicked off and we had a bunch of head coaches and the seniors and they did a heck of a job well the seniors of course were mighty mighty proud of that effort and i think the important fact there too is that a lot of it's going to carry over to the underclassmen well i'll tell you they i hope so we carried a um, hundred kids down there and Hopefully they'll get the idea that it's a nice bowl game, you know, the bowl. It's a pretty nice outfit that uh, they like to go to every year, and maybe that'll have some carryover <laughs> there. We, maybe we get a little extra work out of the, our young kids, too. Many, many fans in Jacksonville Friday night, many, many of them are waiting to see now for a second time the Tigers in action against the Buckeyes of Ohio State, so let's get right into the action. You recede, we're unable to move, punt it over to Ohio State, and here we go. Oh, yeah, Ohio State came out throwing the football, which surprised a little bit. They, they got, had a little mis misdirection pass against us that hurt us there early in, in the ball game. You talked about your defense, and we will see at the culmination of this drive just how important a factor they were in the early stages when you couldn't get field position. Well, we couldn't get field position in our defense. We told them just to go wild and go go play like they hadn't played in a long time. There's a good run by Springs, with an outstanding running back. But uh, you won't see too many clips on this film where that there's not 10 or 11 people running football. And, and here's a big play right here by looks like who was that? Uh, this Gathers making a big play out on the Steve stone. Gibbs also. Gibbs. Big play, big play, come on, there they come, there comes another one, there comes Bubba taking a shot at him all the way across the field. Backed up, they going in, and defense got the back to the wall, here it is, fourth down play, there's one, two, three, four, five, there's some, some more. So they got plenty of orange people around there, and, and, and that's, that was a big, big play early in the ball game. They had the gamble, they went ahead and wanted to get points on the board. Offense got football backed up, you got to bring it out of here, one of our goals all year. Offensive was if we had to get the football never punt inside the 10 10 yard line and we have to do it the first time we get the football There's This block right there and Steve does a good job getting a couple couple yards on, on the deal on the outside Did you ever feel at that point that you might want to gamble on a big play? 
Uh, we, 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 only last time we gambled on the big plays in Georgia backed up. <laughs> so we don't want to gamble anymore. There's defense back in there. Defense, they played too much the first quarter. They was on the field too much. There's Bull Bubba. The linebackers, they must have made a jillion tackles Friday night. A couple of amazing young men. They're not big enough to be linebackers. I tell you, they are, they are super young men. I'm just so grateful that one of them be back and just so grateful to see the other one end up on a great note. That was a good play by Willie Jordan's there. Tootin's over there. There's a the band. They, get, they, they always do a good job. Danny, I know you were probably caught up somewhat in the fans' emotion, too, were you not? Oh, shoot. I tell you what, if it hadn't been for the fans and the assistant coaches, we, we would never made it to the ball game. I don't believe. Nice play by Steve. Good, good, good effort by him turning that in there. It's not a real good play by one of our linemen. He's, you know, he's giving effort, and that's what we asked him to do. We get backed up there with a penalty now. Steve comes out. He's going to roll his right and throw it here. Nice catch by Jerry. Good pitch and throw. Field was in good shape. Dude. We had a lot of rain there the day before. Now the defense back on the field again. They they stayed on the field an awful long time. Ah, the boy. There comes. Three or four, nice play by Randy Scott. Brooks is in there. Willie Underwood's around the football. You get D like that, it makes them a little hesitant the next time through, doesn't it? I'll tell you, it makes them look around a little bit. There's a nice pass, nice play by their quarterback. Their quarterback played a good football game. He's, he's going to be an excellent player. He's just a freshman. Ed Gathers wasn't in bad shape on that, on that just perfect throw and catch. Sprint draw, defense, you know, good call by them. They get, get some yardage. Defense just hung in there. Here they, it's second time, third time, second time they've been in there close on there in the field and they just have to settle for three here. They right guard might have moved there early if they didn't catch him. Get three points out of it. If, if they've been in there twice now, don't come out with three points, you know, we, we still in good shape. Offense time, little misdirection option. That's the fourth series there. We decided we got to do something slow the linebackers down and, and uh, we come back with a fullback inside and, and uh, misdirection option. Steve does a good job, picks up a bit of yardage there. It's been typical of the Tigers all year. You reach a little crisis area, suddenly they come to the floor. Yeah, big play by here, missed assignment inside. The one in the lineman, that's good effort on somebody getting, getting downfield. And then Steve turns and makes a bad play and a good play. Big pullback. Oh boy, Tracy. All we ask their pullbacks do when they get the football, get four yards. They did it pretty consistently for you Friday night. He's sprinting out again. Nice catch. Nice throw. Well, I tell you, the Clemson people's going to hate to see those two leave. I know a bunch of coaches that are, too. <laughs> <laughs> Misdirection option again here. Joe uh, Bostick in front. There's uh, Bray Who downfield. There's Steve turning up and getting the getting first down. Misdirection option on the goal line. Only about the third or fourth time around this play. And Steve just runs over a couple of them, gets in the end zone, makes it happy. Everybody in Clemson is happy right now. And, Everybody on our sideline is happy. Did you realize at that point that you were leading Ohio State? No, I never did. No, I, I, I don't know. The only thing I worried about was him getting that two-point play. Misdirection, there's a bootleg pass. Oh, we missed one right there. There comes three more, though. So, we, you know, it's okay if uh, that first one missed just so we got a bunch after him after that one. Misdirection pass and reverse pass, fullback in the flat, wide open, and we had... Uh, Never, I don't believe we've seen that play all year, and they caught us napping on that one a little bit. Throwback post to the tight end, wide open. That old boy, six eight, right there. And old Bubba nearly had to climb up his back to catch him. That wasn't that wasn't Bubba's fault or anybody's fault. They caught us in a bad coverage, and they just caught a good play. And here's another good play by Ohio State. Uh, we stayed in that coverage, you know, two plays too many, and they caught us in it. Here's a big play here, I believe. Is this? Yeah. Steve Gibbs Steve, gets his yeah, hand They on. get illegal procedure, and Steve Gibbs, that's probably the biggest play in a football game right there. And it's, it, it puts them on the odd point now, and they got to do something later, and it doesn't work for them. So Schleister's given them a 9-7 to seven lead over you. And time's starting to run down in that first half, Danny. We, 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 we come back, and we get in our two-minute offense, and, and we, we get a penalty. Uh, we get a pass and a finish penalty, or pushing on, on the offense, and Steve just overcomes that and comes back and throws to Clark, and Dwight right here, uh, you know, he rehearsed his shoulder here, separated his shoulder again, didn't play anymore after this play, and he, he started off, Dwight started off having one of his best games ever. Here's a little uh, pass to Rashford in the flat, and he does exactly what he's supposed to do, gets out of bounds, stops the clock, and we're going to come back with a draw here and try to get a little bit of, in the middle of the field or a little bit better field position. They're not, not too good, but... Uh, 
a little bit closer, and O'Reary comes in, and uh, he hits the ball right in the middle and smacks it through the, end, through the uprights for with no time left in the half. I got the last play of the half, and we go ahead 10 to 9. So the Gator Bowl 1978 sees Clemson on top of the Ohio State Buckeyes at halftime. There it is by a score of 10 to 9. Danny, we'll be back to take a look at the second half in a moment. I, of course, uh, am looking at this film for only the second time. You and I had a brief look at it prior to the show today, but this third quarter must have really thrilled you the way your team got after it defensively, and, of course, you established the great offensive drive. I tell you, we, we thought, we said at halftime, the first five minutes when we come back in is going to be very important. And our defense, they jumped after folks that, that first part of that third quarter. They, they played as well as they played all year. Offense had to come back and make a long drive, and, and uh, you know, it looked pretty good there for in the third quarter there early. We're not going to wait. We're going to get right to it now and see Ohio State attempt to go on offense, but watch this Tiger D. There comes uh, the outside beer, which they heard us on early in the first half. Randy Scott just gets, scrapes over there and makes a great tackle. They are excited. They're getting around the football now. The defense playing good. They come back with a little bit of pressure here. They throw a delay, and there's old Bubba. He makes a good play, and there's going to be four or five of them congratulating him. And they come back with the draw here, and there's a bunch on it. So we're playing good defense right now. They're our defensive staff and our defensive players, they, they wanted to win the football game, and they're excited, and they're, they're jumping around, and they want that football back for the offense. Here the offense gets the football back. We're sprinting out to the left. Steve's throwing. And here was a big play here. About a nice catch by Perry Tuttle. That was, that was a big third down play right there. Kept the football, kept the momentum for the offense. Well, we've talked a lot about seniors, Danny, but there's a freshman. I see Cliff Austin in there, a freshman also. They're, well, I'll tell you, they perform well under the pressures. Yeah, we had uh, a lot of young kids play well. They, they, they had no choice. They had to play well. They were pressure in the football game. There's Mr. Action playing that pitch to Austin that you just mentioned. Going to be a good running back, I believe. There's a fullback inside, and this is great. Second and third and fourth effort, and, and Marvin comes up there and gets that big first down right there, and he runs over four or five in big old Ohio guys. Nice direction, and they, they bring a hard, nice cut, nice play, nice block by Sam downfield, good, good block by the wide receiver, and don't hurt little Rat because he's about too little to play. He just he just does a great job for him. Well, there's a story in itself, Warren Rashford. I'll tell you a bunch about that young man. He's been through a bunch. That Marvin Sims again, getting his four yards. It's pretty good movement up front. Our, our offensive line played well. We were real proud of them. We felt like if uh, we were to win the football game, Here's a sweep by Rat and Joe out front. That was a big first down. Uh, that was the third down play. Third and four, and Rat made the first down. Felt like we're going to win the football game. The up front people had to win it on both sides, on offense and defense. Here we're going in right here. Steve pulls it down, gets it back to the two, three, one, maybe right down the one yard line. Takes us three cracks here. We line up in our power offense, which we, we think we can score any time we get in this formation. And uh, let Austin have the crack at it. And, and this football in there, and push it ahead. And, 16, the point comes up and makes 17. Well, I can imagine that Gator Bowl was erupting because it was obviously very partisan Clemson. Yeah, there's a lot on. Here, defense gets back on the field. They come back with misdirection again. And probably pull back and flat. The game's finding good pressure by Steve doing a great play by their quarterback. But there's three or four more people back there. And there's a loss of five yards right there on that, that particular play for pass play. Everybody stayed home there, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Here's good pressure again. He gets get knocks in down, gets outside. Catches football, but they're out of bounds. We need all the help we can get, so our, our kids are refereeing a little bit right there. <laughs> Can't blame them for that. Offense again. Misdirection option. Good pitch, good play. Get you six yards. Make second, third down, get easy downs if you get that good first down play. Fullback, nice good movement up front, good blocking up front, good running by the fullback. 
Tracy and Marvin complement each other so well, as do many youngsters on your team. Really do. Here, here's a big part of, of the football games, kicking games. Our specialty people play well. And, and there's uh, Mr. Buckeye meeting a tiger right there. That's Jeff Sewell. He makes a great play, great tackle. He, and our specialty folks have played well all year. Big part of our football team. Good pressure by Stucky and Tony Williams. Good pressure. They throw a nice catch by that their young player. Big tight end again. Now one of our guys slips down, but they made a nice throw and catch out of it. Quarterback moving football pretty well right here. And that doggone, we tipped the football and should have had an interception maybe, but they they uh, make a good catch out of it. Here they come on in. They moving the football. They got. I think it, they this was a 12 play drive for them. Covered 87 yards. It's good, good play. Good outside beer there that they score on. And, well, we had a chance to get them down there, and we let them come back and give them new life. But uh, they go for two here. They, they move the ball over and they run outside of there. And there's Stucky and there's Gathers and there's Tony Williams on the, all the way from the other side. There's Toot, and that's probably the biggest play of the football game. That and the block extra point there. All our defense coaches are excited. Jim Stucky's excited. Uh, all the fans are excited and. Were you excited? I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> the offense gets the football. We got to move the football. Nice sweep here. Good block. Good run. Good post. Good downfield. Good extra effort. Not sure how that got through there. Steve backed up. This comes right after a holding penalty. We get a holding penalty right there on the veer to the left side, and, and it was about third and 18, and uh, Steve comes back, stays in the pocket well, and hits the tunnel for a first down on the third down play. Big play right there. Sweep again. Here comes Rashford. Good block by Dosey out front. Uh, Jerry, the piece of the man. Uh, Rashford gets his, some yardage there. All right, Ohio State with the football. Well, I think this, Time is, down. this is the last drive here. They, they move in the football, and they throw a nice pass right there. Linebacker couldn't hardly get there. Nearly got there. Randy nearly got there, but he did a nice tackle, keeping everything in front of it by the defensive backs. But they move in the football. Not very much time left here. And they fake the sprint draw, throw the out cut, and he's open again. They do a good job getting out of bounds, stopping the clock, getting close to that field goal range, which uh, field goal would have would have beaten us here or, or put them ahead. Outside there, Eddie Gathers makes a great play, but hold on, Eddie. He just holds on to help this there, and there comes their game tackling and a lot of orange shirts around. That's the, uh, that's the big play right there, the football game, too. And of course, Bowman intercepts the football and, and uh, does a good job. And there's the most unfortunate incident. Oh, uh, we hate that. We really do. I don't believe uh, I was heard two sides of the story, and, and uh, I'm sorry it happened, but uh, I, I, our, our young people were not mm, at fault at all for intercepting football. Danny, this is that happy and proud moment for you, the Tiger football team, the coaching staff, of course the fans and the supporters, all of the administrative people, cheerleaders, band, everyone at Clemson University has waited for a moment like this, and you young man brought it to them on Friday night, December the 29th. It's a night that will long be remembered in Clemson history. We'll be back in a moment. was Danny a first for you on Friday night as a head coach and what a job you did and a first today sitting here doing a television show like this uh, which made you the most nervous I guess the TV show <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been in front of people I'll tell you they're gonna find out I got a lot of improving to do out in the general public but uh, we look forward to, to improving on it I think I can speak for Tiger fans when I say that uh, they're going to enjoy you being yourself, and they'd much rather you be that way. And as long as you coach football teams the way you coached on Friday night, they're not going to be too overly concerned. Danny, again, recognition to the team and the coaching staff for just an outstanding job well done. Really did. I'll tell you, our, our seniors, and, and I hate to talk so much about it. I don't really hate to talk so much about our seniors, but they did a super job, and there's some of them that didn't play much. They contributed all during the year, and... Uh, they just did a super job. We can't say enough about them. The, the people at Clemson, the people out there out the state of South Clemson, uh, Clemson played for the last two years, have seen a, 
a pretty exciting group of people that will no longer be li in, lined up in uniform, and, and uh, we're just so proud of them, and, and we know they'll be successful in life. You know, another thing, I, I have to think about this, because I saw the scout teams down there working feverishly every day, helping out the guys who were going to play in that football game, and that's got to be big for them to go through an experience like this. It sure is. You know, they just hope that they can remember and say, you know, we would like to go back and be another part of a bowl trip one of these days, and I'm sure they will. You know, if, if they work at it, you know, that's all you got to do is work and get some breaks, and maybe they'll get their turn. Knowing you the way I do, they'll work. Oh, we got to play football for Clemson. We got to work. That's uh, you know, there's no no, no success story that, that doesn't come without work. So we just look forward to the opportunity to to, to be the coach at Clemson and, and getting back on. We got a whole lot of work to do. We we lose all those seniors, but. Uh, we got a lot of good people around too, I tell you. I know you got some other folks there that you wanted to talk about. Oh, I tell you, they, just like we start with the fans, we can't do anything about it. We had more fans for it. I got uh, telegrams from uh, uh, Arizona. I got telegrams from out in El Paso even, and I'd like to congratulate the basketball team. They, they were behind us 100%. We, we appreciate their support and we congratulate them on their victory. And, you know, the, uh, all the people in the athletic department that makes things happen, you know, the, the, the secretaries and the people that don't get the, uh, all the, support or the glory they should get for the work they do, but they, they, they've got a lot of people that need need credit. And the, the film people that do the film for us all year, that do the, the, does the film work here and does the film work in the practice and things that help us. There's just so many people. We'd like to thank all of them for their support and their help. And uh, Dr. Edwards, you know, that was his last ball game, so we really uh, are glad that he got to go out as a winning, his last one as a winner. Well, I'll tell you what, I know he appreciated what happened. Now, anyone who thinks that work is over for you and your staff, better think again right well, now I guess we go back to work we were we had the vacation yesterday driving home from uh, uh, the Gator Bowl and uh, so we got to go back going recruiting we got a couple of our coaches gonna spend a couple days in Jacksonville and Daytona uh, there where they can go to Orlando maybe to the Disney World and then we're gonna come back and go to work Wednesday and uh, got to go back recruiting and get some players we got we got to have some that's filling for all the le uh, leadership senior leadership we lo we lose and uh, we got to get on the road and go back to work. We'll do that till about February, and then we'll have to start our off-season program in uh, January. It's kind of like a two-part recruiting season. You recruit a lot in the South. Uh, now you'll start working the North even heavier, attempting to sign on the national day. You know, we wanted to be somewhere between 18 and 20 before we broke for the Gator Bowl, and we, we, we are at 18. And, and we got a bunch, we got, well, we got about eight kids coming in this weekend for official visits, and, uh, you know, we just need to do a good job. and. Get some of them, maybe some of them Ohio kids that we, we can go up there and <laughs> tell them what comes with that. You yeah. keep mentioning that. You got a new car to drive up there. Um, well, I'll tell you, the those people at Clemson, I'm gonna do, they're not ordinary. We, we don't <laughs> think our football players are ordinary, and we know they're not. You can't be ordinary and play football, and I don't believe you can be a, be a, a Clemson fan without being ordinary, and they, they surprise the devil out of us, I'll tell you that. Well, Danny, congratulations on a great victory, your first as a head coach and first at Clemson University, obviously. Looking forward to many, many more Sundays with you, and especially Saturday afternoons come the fall. We'll see you then. Thank you, Jim. We appreciate it. This has been a look at Friday's Clemson-Ohio State Clash. Gator Bowl 78 highlights with commentary by Coach Danny Ford and the voice of the Clemson Tigers, Jim Phillips. This program was pre-recorded.